welcome to our annual Prayer for Saints annual prayer conference. We're glad to be with you tonight, and this is a great time to connect with every saint who's uh, praying, who's trusting God around the world. So our prayer conference will start tonight, and we're glad to know that God always with us, and he will guide us, and he will bless you where you are right now, and he will touch you, so stay tuned. And also our sessions will be um, tomorrow morning, 10.30 a.m., and another session will be evening, 7.30 p.m. tomorrow. Sunday, Sunday morning we'll have our church service live online, and also the final session of the conference will be 7.30 p.m. So please uh, keep track of this schedule and stay with us. This conference will be online only, so uh, make sure you know that and uh, join us and stay tuned with, uh, with every, every announcements. But more than everything, we want you to log in to website, our ministry website, gfanmi.org. There's information on the screen, so please log into this website and put your prayer request for yourself, for your family, for your friends. Whatever need you have, we'll have a special prayer time at the end of the conference. We'll, we'll gather all the prayer requests and we'll pray together as the saints and we'll bring them to the throne of God. And tonight we glad to be with you in your home and connect with you. May God bless you abundantly. May God give you ability to comprehend and receive from Holy Spirit the word of life and his touch and his uh, new wine in the spirit. So tonight our speaker, Dr. Emmanuel Ziga, will be after this, he will be with you. So please uh, make sure you're ready to receive this word from God, from the throne of grace, in the name of Jesus. We bless you, and stay tuned. Good evening, and welcome to the annual Grace for All Nations Prayer Conference, Pray 2020. Our hosts this weekend are Dr. Emmanuel Ziga and Pastor Tiffany Ziga with a special guest speaker, Apostle Axel Sipak. We believe God is going to speak to you this weekend, so be sure to share the conference with your friends on social media by visiting the Emmanuel Ziga Ministries Facebook Live and YouTube channels. The live stream schedule for this weekend includes Saturday 10.30 a.m. and 7.30 p.m. and Sunday 10.30 a.m. and 7.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Be sure to go to GFANMI org to join our email list and get the latest updates on all upcoming events such as our September Leadership Conference and October Fire Conference. Lastly, if you need prayer for anything, we would love to agree with you for your need. Email your prayer request to seattle at gfanmi.org. We have been receiving testimonies of the power of prayer and would love to hear yours. We have also received testimonies about Dr. Ziga's latest book, Power of One. This is an incredible resource to empower your leadership skills in your sphere of influence. Order the book on Amazon and tap into the power of God within you to lead. Thank you for being a part of Grace for All Nations online family. In this season, God is doing new things in a new way, so we're glad you are here with us. We believe God has a word for you today. Blessings, blessings, blessings. What joy it is to be with you at prayer 2020. Wow. It's it's been it's been 20 years, 20 years since we have been handling the subject of prayer, but specifically 14 years solid when we've been praying every night. Midnight. By God's grace, we've not missed one night uh, because the Lord commanded that we do so. Uh, the midnight prayers uh, all uh, began at a certain time when we were having a prayer conference, and I felt like we should meet every night for the for the two weeks to the conference, 
and just pray for what God was to do. Our expectation was so high uh, that we felt that was a cardinal important year for our ministry. We fasted for two weeks for the conference, and when it was over, the, the Holy Spirit said, while the conference ended, we should continue. So I thought maybe we would, we would go ahead for about uh, the next week. And the end of the, of the first week, I felt not to stop. So we kept meeting every night to pray. Two weeks later, uh, it was becoming quite, quite uh, difficult. So we decided to meet with the team and say, you know what? I have a feeling that uh, we may have to seek God's counsel as to how further we could take this midnight prayer. And so we, we decided to go fast and pray for three days and then come back to get a consensus as to what the Lord had, had been speaking to everybody. So we met. And in my mind, what I wanted to do was to cut it down to three days, maybe a week. So every after day, every, every other night, we will meet and pray. Uh, then whilst we came, I think it was a Friday, to, to, to gather the, uh, the consensus, an angel of the Lord stood in front of me, almost about 12 feet thereabouts, uh, and, and he, said, he spoke to me and said, you can't afford to miss one night. You can't afford not to pray one night, you know, paraphrasing. And uh, well, he spoke that to me just about a minute before I heard the consensus. So I knew exactly what God wanted. And we had a unanimous, a unanimous uh, confirmation and affirmation and a conviction from the Holy Spirit not to stop praying every night. It's been 14 years this June. And we thank God for what he has done through these years of consistent prayer, persistent prayer. It's not been easy. It's been difficult. But only time will, will, will tell. Only eternity will tell the results of praying every night for 14 years. The testimonies are just overwhelming. I mean, handling anything and everything that God put in our spirit to pray every night. One of the the things I have not done well is to just is to share testimonies and put them online. Uh, I I am that kind of a person who wants to just stay quiet in the quiet, let the Holy Ghost share his own testimony. Otherwise, we will be so inundated with stories and, and stories about the power of prayer, the, the, the gift of prayer, the importance of prayer, the, the, the reason to pray, and, uh, and what prayer has done to us. Uh, we have come to realize that prayer is one of the great gifts of God given to human beings. And all generations of the humans have had to live with prayer. To speak to God through prayer. Prayer is therefore a necessity for all humans. Uh, prayer is a principle and an ordinance of God. Prayer is the embellishment of every act of worship. God is the object of worship. He is the, he is the subject of, of, of worship. It doesn't matter what you do in the house of the Lord. It is. It is embellished by prayer. We, we, we preach be, uh, because we have prayed and heard from the Lord. Uh, we worship the Lord prayerfully because worship, singing in, in, in holiness is prayer. Uh, praising God uh, is prayer. And intercession is prayer. Uh, you, you hear from God except by prayer. Uh, you can walk in the miraculous except by by prayer. All these incredible miracles we've seen in crusades, in conferences, uh, either the Rehat Bonke ministries or the Catherine Kuhlman ministries or the, 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 the Kenneth Copeland ministries, the Benahin ministries, the Joyce Meyer ministries, the Dolostin ministries, just name them all. Behind the scenes is the grace of consistent prayer which produces the supernatural. The mystery of prayer, we can explain. It is impossible for any human to define the, 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 the composite subject matter of prayer. 
because it's a spiritual act of God. Uh, we, we can explain how, how, how uh, it works, but we can't understand what that means to God. Why God established prayer as an ordinance. Prayer is also the platform by which we access God and all that God is all that God has, and all that he has finished on the cross for us, that which is already prepared for you, we are able to access by prayer. Prayer is also the platform that is a rendezvous, a, a meeting place between the natural and the spiritual. God is supernatural. We are natural, natural, uh, but as we meet, the super meets the natural and we produce amazing results. Uh, prayer has a universal mandate for, for a, and, and a blessing to all generations. Prayer provokes the message of God. It provokes the sovereignty of God. It provokes the justice of God. It provokes the judgment of God. It provokes the glory of God. It provokes the presence of God. Anything of God, everything of God is activatable by prayer. It's accessible by prayer. Receive the grace to pray. Receive the anointing to pray. Receive the beauty of prayer. Receive the revelation of prayer. It is my prayer that this prayer conference will usher you into another dimension of the things of God and another dimension of your personal fellowship with God. Prayer is very important. Prayer is very important. Prayer is very important. The importance of prayer cannot be overemphasized. I wish I could overemphasize it. Even that would be an understatement. One of the things I have learned about Jesus is that when he was on the earth, he prayed and prayed and prayed on such consistent basis uh, that blows the mind of those who have studied him and I believe those who lived with him. Of all the prophets on the earth, there was none holier than Jesus. Of all the prophets on the earth, there was none godlier than Jesus. And of all the prophets on the earth, there was none more righteous than Jesus. Yet upon all the, about, among all the prophets of the earth, there was none that prayed more than Jesus. You know, in Matthew chapter uh, 14, we will not read the scripture. The Bible says after Jesus had fed the, the 5,000 uh, men, plus uh, women and children, which means he, he possibly exceeded over 12,000 people in ministry that day, ministered to them and, um, and, and, and preached to them the word of God. Uh, he fed them as well. And the Bible says after he had done all that, he sent the multitudes away to their homes, but he sent his disciples to go into the boat to go to the other side. But as for him, he ascended unto the hill. It was already a hilly place, but he went into a, the, a higher platform, the apex of the mountain, where he would be alone. In that solitude place, he engaged himself in prayer. The Bible says, and on the fourth watch, he saw in the spirit that his disciples were under a very heavy attack in the storms on the Sea of Galilee, and he walked upon water. The, the, the verbiage, the fourth watch, uh, in the time connotations of the Hebrew calendar, uh, of the Roman ca calendar, it was, it was the 12th hour of prayer, because the first watch began from 6 p.m. So from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., Jesus Christ prayed. That was the first watch. From 9 p.m., to 12 midnight, that was the second watch. My Lord, my brother, my savior, my redeemer, my redemption, the Messiah prayed till 12 midnight. He continued from 12 midnight to three in the morning, he prayed. And from three in the morning till six in the morning, the fourth watch, he, 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 he began to walk on water and he saved his disciples. What am I saying? There is none 
who understands prayer like Jesus. If there's anyone who should not have prayed, it should have been Jesus because he was God. But if God, among God, and God like Jesus saw the importance of prayer, how can we ever think of justifying the principle of prayerlessness? And as if this was not overwhelming, it is a miracle for me to read in the Bible in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, which says that he ever liveth making intercession for us. As much as he spent so many times, so many hours in prayer, the disciples found out that in between one time of prayer and the next time of prayer, miracles took place. The supernatural took place. I mean, it was an overwhelming experience to watch the ministry of Jesus. The blind saw so easily. The lame walk so easily. Uh, the dead rose up so easily. The, the, the presence of God that was around him, the aura of goodness and greatness around him was so overwhelming. You can imagine the light that shone around him. The angels that were around his atmosphere supernaturally uh, was so overwhelming that one day the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples to pray. Remember that these were Jewish people who understood the ordinance of prayer. Would you be a Jew and not understand that there's something called prayer? Because the Bible, which is what we read, is their culture. And for Jewish people to still ask Jesus, and particularly teach us to pray, means that he presented such a higher uh, 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 a dimension of prayer that made what they knew look like nothing. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So Hebrews 7 verse 25 says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost, that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. So you can see that whilst he lived on this earth, he prayed and he, he therefore interceded. He interceded for his next phase of ministry. He interceded for everybody who would pray for in the next day. He interceded for any message, every message he would preach. He was always ahead of the natural works by prayer. So prayer was his advanced forward program in the spirit in the night. And in the day, they were the release of the supernatural and the glory in excelsis deo. It means that prayer is so important that even as he is in heaven, he is ever praying in heaven. So there's one thing he's still doing in heaven. He's ever interceding for us. Imagine that. And because of the power of prayer in his life, the Bible says he is able to save them to the uttermost. Which means that the, the, the anointing on his life has become very effective to the extent that he is able to save from the uttermost of, of evil to the uttermost of glory. He is able to save from the guttermost to the uttermost. There is nothing impossible that Christ cannot do in terms of saving a nation, saving a people, saving a man, saving a family, transforming our world, or answering any, any request. Because the power of prayer in his life has become and is the motivator, the activator, the catalyst of the anointing for results. Uh, prayer, therefore, is the key that opened the oil and the door of the fulfillment of purpose. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is also the beginning and the ending. He is the life of light. And in him is the light that shines among all men that come upon the earth. And in him is the light that shines and the darkness comprehends it not. Ladies and gentlemen, may you be baptized with the anointing for prayer, with the revelation for prayer. May prayer become easy for you. 
may God grant you a fresh appetite and a strong hunger for prayer. May prayer look so beautiful in your sight because it is one thing you can do freely to always activate everything that God has for you. It is, it is, it is uh, the lingua franca. It is the common de denominator. Prayer is the language of God. We communicate by, by prayer. When I go to Germany, I speak with Germans, speak into Deutsch. You speak German in Germany. In Russia, you speak Russia with the Russians. And when you are in Spain, you speak Spanish with the Spanish. But here, when you are in the house of the Lord, the language you speak is prayer. It's the language of heaven. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. I pray this day that this prayer conference themed the prayer of the saints uh, will be an evolution in your life. It will be a transformation in your life. It will bring you into an all-time osmosis that will cause you to begin to move on a different trajectory of life. Receive the anointing. I feel the oil of prayer. Feel the anointing of prayer. I see the nations being flooded with the oil of prayer right now. As the waters covered the earth in the days of Noah, so God's prayer fever is covering the nations. I see Africa be drowned by the flood of prayer. I see Western Europe, Eastern Europe, up. I see, I see Madag Madagascar, the island on the east side of Africa. I see the Scandinavian nations. I see Eskimos uh, being affected by the angels who have come upon the earth to activate prayer. Well, this message is being preached. I know that I know because the Lord spoke to me. If I say I know, it's because I have heard from the Lord. Uh, and I saw in the spirit when I was preparing for this message, I saw a flood uh, of water. Uh, flowing in the sky and it looked like a river that had uh, gone beyond its, its banks. It's, it looked like a river that began to flood its pathways because of abundance of rain. And this river as in this vision, I saw boxes of gifts and, and boxes and stuff floating on the river. And they all looked like boxes and items that had been locked somewhere that had been there for a long time. So the boxes looked very old. And I saw it flooding the sky as I was praying. It almost looked as if I was standing just by the bank of, of a river. And I said, Lord, what is this? What, are, what am I seeing? He says that this prayer conference is releasing the prayer of the saints that is unlocking and miracles and blessings and favors and promises that have already been given to men that were stuck out there by all kinds of difficult things like curses or, or, or sin or lack of faith and stuff like that. But God is pouring an anointing of grace upon this prayer conference that is going to loose and give everybody hallelujah. I oh, feel the anointing. Feel the Holy Ghost right now. The nations are going to begin to experience uh, breakthroughs that have been delayed. Uh, people are going to begin to receive miracles that have been delayed. Um, people are going to walk into their marriages uh, that had been prepared for them. But for one or two reasons, uh, it never came to pass. I see somebody, your, your name is Isabel or Isabella. Uh, you should have been married five years ago. I, the, the Lord is telling me, that the release is coming in this prayer conference. The man you are about to, to, to marry or you are dating, he, his first name is D. There's a D at the beginning of his name. Uh, Dixon or... or Daniel or something, but there's something coming your way. I see, I saw, oh my goodness, the miracles of God have already begun. I give God praise, Lord. I worship you, Holy Spirit. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise, oh God. I give you praise. I see God working globally. This is the platform of grace for all nations, ministries international, and therefore, oh God, may the grace that you have for all the nations be increased in our portion measure. 
And let there be solutions more than problems. Let mercy overtake judgment. Let mercy overtake war. Let peace prevail over difficulties. Let healing overwhelm sickness and diseases. And let joy and confidence overwhelm fear, phobia, and intimidation. May the power of intimidation be broken over the nations. May the power of intimidation be broken over America. May the power of intimidation be broken over governments and governances. Lord, have mercy upon us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I, 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 I have a sense in my spirit that there are many governors and mayors and political leaders who are making errors. And not because they choose to, but because they are overwhelmed with intimidation. The, the, the spirit of intimidation is, 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 is activating um, people who have good hearts, but to make errors. Lord, let intimidation be broken. Let the curse of intimidation be broken. Let the curse of, uh, of, of, of spells be broken over our cities, be, be broken over our countries, uh, be broken over our businessmen, be broken over our churches and ministries. Say hallelujah. Receive the joy of prayer. One good thing about prayer is that in our time, in our generation, it is the key that gives to you what God has already finished for you. It's the key that gives to you what God has already prepared for you. It is also the key that, that blocks things which should come your way. Prayer. 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 Receive the anointing. I said receive the anointing. The theme is the prayer of the saints. The prayer of of saints, and we take our scripture uh, from the book of Revelation, chapter eight, and I read from the first verse to the fourth verse, the first verse to the fifth verse. Excuse me. Oh, come, Holy Spirit, let's pray. Have your way. Cover me with your precious blood, oh Jesus, and let the priestly garment of heaven be my portion, be our portion. Jesus, thank you that your garment of prayer has been released and is being released right now upon all that believe. Let everyone that has faith receive their portion for a fresh prayer mantle, a fresh prayer shawl, a fresh prayer, prayer oil, and a new prayer revelation. Thank you for the revolution of prayer that has come upon the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Half an hour, there was silence in heaven for half an hour. So you can imagine uh, what, what an hour in, in spirit time would mean. It's a different connotation to natural time. This is not, I believe, uh, uh, chronological, but this is more spirit time. And so here, for half an hour, there was silence. 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 The Bible says in verse 2, that, and I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given trumpets. And verse 3 says, and another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints. That he should offer it with the prayer of all saints. So here we see the prayers of the saints and also an angelic offering of incense which goes alongside with the prayers of the saints. It's almost like saying that when you serve a food on the table, you must put salt or pepper, and it goes along with the food. Uh, or, or you, 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 you have a, a, a meal that must be a, a, a component, a necessary component that makes the meal complete, which means you don't serve one without the other. Uh, so here you say that the prayers of the saints are not served without the incense from the hand of the angel. If there are no incenses being released, it means there are no prayers being given. And if there are prayers being given, then incense also must be applied. Listen to this and remember this, that this was an angel handling this aspect of the project in the presence of God. The first three 
verses we've read so far, you see seven angels, you see another angel. So here about eight. So here, the Bible says uh, that he shall offer it with the prayers of all saints, of all saints, of all saints, of all saints, which tells me Old Testament and New Testament, of all saints, saints in all the nations of the earth, of all saints, of all the continents of the earth. So your prayers are, are, are included in the ministry of incense when they get to heaven. Remember this, your prayers are so important but when they arrive in heaven, when they arrive where they are supposed to go, there is an usher of an angel whose job is to minister to your prayer before it is presented to God. And, and this incense, as it were, is to make it complete, is to garnish it, is to serve it, uh, is to package it in the way that can be acceptable before God, is to package it in a way that God cannot deny uh, its relevance nor uh, deny its request, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints, either a baby or an adult, uh, either, either a teenager or, or, or a mature man, a boy or a girl, a man or a woman, even if a one-year-old boy prays, or cries prayerfully, that sound, that intention must be applied with an incense. Wow. So every prayer with its own portion of incense. It's called the, 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 the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Gold stands for divinity. So here, this is not the altar of man. This is not the altar of Israel. This is the altar of God himself. Everybody's altar is very personal to them. Altars are very precious and they are very uh, 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 de de defined by the person who built it. And it's also defined by the person who serves on it. So God has an altar. It's a golden altar built by God for God's own services and, and activities. Well, if, if the angel will, will, will connect your prayers to the personal altar of God, which is God's golden altar, it tells you the, the, the premium, uh, the, the value that God puts upon your prayers. In other words, he receives it very personally. Uh, he doesn't just allow the prayer to, to, to transverse in any region of heaven. The, God lets them come straight into his personal holy, holy place, right before his throne. And this golden altar services your prayers. Uh, hallelujah. Services our prayer. Uh, which are sent before him. Look at verse 4, please. Verse 4 uh, of Revelation chapter 8, verse 4. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. So, it's a, so, so it tells me that first our prayers arrive, uh, what I may call uh, the, 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 the prayer altar or the prayer court of heaven. And then after it is prepared, it is, it is released into the higher place or the high place of heaven. Uh, in this place, in this case, I will call it the oracle, uh, the holy of all holies of God. Say hallelujah. So our prayers are sent from the earth. And after they have been pre prepared and garnished well, they also are sent even further. Even further. Ladies and gentlemen, our airplanes cannot go that far. Uh, SpaceX just went into space. I don't know how far they can go. Uh, their dreams are to eventually hit Mars. But beyond Mars, how far can, can they go? But your prayers go beyond the, 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 the space station. Your prayers go beyond Mars and Jupiter. Your prayers go beyond the moon, goes beyond uh, the, uh, the sun, and goes right 
into the throne room of God uh, and it is received uh, by the protocol of God. Every presence has a protocol and God's presence has a protocol. And in this atmosphere of the protocol of God, angels who are prepared uh, and, and created uh, to be experts in the manicuring, the garnishing, and the presentation of our prayers, minister to your prayers. I wish I could take a little bit more time because if we can get this, uh, we can continue with the journey of this prayer conference. I'm handling uh, the prayer of the saints. This is prayer conference 2020. Thank you for, for connecting. And please call upon all your friends. Cue in right now and connect to what God is saying to you. I believe I have a word from the Lord. It's a life-changing message. So the Bible says that the priest will ascend even further out of the hand of the angel. In, in, in other words, the angel's activity upon your prayers uh, also uh, uh, shows an approval. Uh, and so the angel says, I approve this. It, it is approved. It is censored as it were. Verse 5, please, verse 5. The Bible says, and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar. And it came into the earth. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings and an earthquake. So here the angel, the angel, after the angel prepares your prayers and adds incense to it in the censer. I don't know how large this sensor is. It must be quite a huge sensor because all prayers of the earth are going in every minute of the day. It doesn't really have to be that large because God can take a small sensor cup and it can still fill all the prayers of the earth. This is God. But, the, the, but, 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 but there is a, a, a receptacle called the sensor. Well, for me, if I want to analyze what I think the sensor does, the sensor is the, 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 the bowl of the purpose of God. It, is the, the, it represents the wheel of God. It re represents the foreknowledge and the plans of God. And, and it also represents uh, the, 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 the place where uh, our prayers are mixed uh, with the purpose of God. Uh, our, our prayers are mixed with the agenda of God. Our prayers are mixed with the will of God. So by the time your prayer is, 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 is repackaged in the sensor, when it comes before God, it does not seem to have your name. It has the name of the Lord Jesus. Because he says, pray in my name. If I say Jesus... Emmanuel Ziga has just prayed, Lord, give us the latter rain outpouring. Let it cover all the earth as the waters cover the sea. Flood this world suddenly with your glory. I have just prayed. This prayer now is, is, has arrived within minutes, has arrived. And this angel, I believe, uh, ha, ha, has just received my prayer. And he, he has just taken uh, the, the, the incense, mixed it. So from the level of the angelic activity to the, to the higher throne room, it doesn't have my name. It now has the endorsement of Jesus. That's why prayers are always answered. Jesus Christ said in John chapter 14, that you must pray in my name. And if you can pray in my name, everything will be answered and nothing will be withheld. So now, after the, after the, the prayer goes through the censer and goes through the, the, the incense, it is now Jesus who takes over the management, the jurisdiction, the, the, the favor of, 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 of my prayers. The incense adds the priestly favor. That's why our prayers provoke the priestly dimension of God. Now, after God receives that, it smells like, 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 like beautiful fragrance in his nostrils. It really smells good. Oh my God. And because incense gives you beautiful fragrance. 
It's a wonderful fragrance. It's the most powerful spice ordained by God, designed by God. And God loves this incredible packaging of our prayers that no prayer will ever be rejected because no matter how, 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 how unclean they may be because of our human nature, once they are processed by the incense, it's packaged by, it, it, it's presented um, before God as, as, as an expert, as an expert package. And it smells so good because your prayers get to heaven flawless. Hallelujah. Flawless. Flawless. And, and, and they are packaged into, into, the, into the, the categories which, which God has in heaven for your will, for, sorry, for his will to be done in your life. So let's assume that five people just prayed. You know, I just prayed about three minutes ago uh, for the glory of God. Maybe somebody j just prayed uh, for God to give him a car. Somebody just prayed for God to heal his wife. Somebody just prayed and asked God for, for, for quadruplets uh, for his, his wife. Now, all these prayers have just arrived in heaven. Within the same minute, the angel takes it them all, and then he packages them. In the packaging by incense, the prayers are put in their categories. Say hallelujah, somebody. Those ones which are for worship or praise, those ones which are for warfare or for miracles or whatever it is, they are all packaged properly. And they are, they are, they are tuned into the, the fulfillment of the purpose of God that goes to attach with it. Which means if you pray against the will of God, the, 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 the incense will remove that which is not of God in, in the prayer. So maybe you use four, four sentences in your prayer because you have four different requests. And one of them is completely against scripture. For example, for example, for example, and excuse me, that, that somebody will be praying that God should give him or her somebody's spouse. Okay, the person is married and, and then you are asking God to give you somebody else's spouse. It, it, it is not what God wants. But it's okay, you can still pray. God is smarter than you, hallelujah. Now the angel will, is there, he will, he will take that and he will remove, you, you just said four things. He will remove that one and clean it up. So because that is not in the will of God. Because, but all the other three are in the will of God. So those three get, get packaged and connected to the purpose of God to be fulfilled upon the earth. God enjoys it. God loves them because God wants his will to be done on the earth. He designed the earth for his will. And prayer is what gives God the opportunity to invade the earth, to manage the earth with his will. Even things already ordained, even things already planned, even things already established in heaven. Prayer gives God the legal ground to give to you. He's already planned for you. Sometimes we say that, well, if Christ has already finished the cross and he said it is finished why why are we having all these all these challenges well there's still a place for prayer because of the of the of the human will because there are many people who god has finished things for on the cross but they don't want what he has done god will honor that so you have to separate uh, your 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 desire to have everything God has for you from somebody else who doesn't want them at all, and God will not impose them upon us. But we, that's why He's put prayer in there. So prayer is not trying to ask God to do something He doesn't want; it's rather to connect you to what He wants. And because He has given us all a will, He honors our will. Just ask what He's already planned for you, and you will have what he's already planned for you because your asking comes into agreement with him. It can be a painful thing to give somebody something precious to you, but he doesn't appreciate it. It's like casting, casting pearls before swine. So God, who is a God of honor, honors himself and, and, and honors all that he does so honorably that the protocol is for everybody to have the free will, the liberty of asking what already has been given to you. You know, the, the story of the prodigal son had a heritage. And I don't know for how long the heritage was there, but until he asked, it wasn't given to him. 
So I pray that during this conference, you will begin to align your heart with the, with, with the heart of God. That you will begin to ask what God has prepared for you. You begin to connect to what God has planned for you. You begin to receive what God wants for you. That you will begin to die to the aspects of your desires which are not of God. It, because if you can begin to pray according to what prayer has been laid down for, you will be one of the greatest partners of God. That's when friendship with God is even amplified and increased into dimensions men have not seen before. The Bible says, and Enoch walked with God and God took him away. So he must have been somebody who, who listened more than he talked. And as he fellowship with God over the years, he began to see what the will of God was and he, he, and he began to, to channel his conversation with God in the, in the, in the language of his will. And God, once God found out that somebody like Enoch, who, who, who wanted his will to be done, well, the Bible says, how can two walk together except they agree? Eventually, God took him away to heaven. God wants his will to be done. Guess what? And his will is the best plan for you. I mean, by far. Five millennials, much more better than what you can ever dream of. You know, you know Abraham Lincoln said that more things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. So you see that all through scripture, uh, people who have prayed more have seen more. Because it means that they have spoken more into the will of God and requested more of all that God had for them. So the more they prayed, the more they received. Very simple. Jesus Christ prayed so much that there was nothing that his father did not give him on the earth. And his disciples saw that, boy, this man has everything happening for him consistently, constantly more. Activating miracles everywhere. I mean, he was only 30 years old, but he was by far the best. Why? Because he prayed more and he prayed right. He prayed right. I say he prayed right. One of the ways you pray right is when there's no guile in your heart. When there is no prejudice in your heart. When, when you just love God with all your heart. That you don't have any judgment or any biases. You just want all that God, have, God has for you with the joy of having what God wants. And with the joy of throwing away what you want. And the joy of having what God has for you. My goodness, you will walk with the warehouse of supplies. You have more than enough to give many other generations. But above all, you have more than enough to fulfill every plan of God for your, for your life in excess. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Ah, the Bible says, after the angel packages our prayers with the incense and releases them to heaven... It begins to smell because in addition to the prayer, you have the incense. And then when the prayers are be received in God's nostrils, God loves it. And God's love connects with it. And God's will connects with them. And God's glory connects with them. And God's eternal purpose connects with them. And God's eternal plan connects with them. And God's eternal uh, beauty connects with them. Guess what? The prayers come down again to the same level. And the Bible says the, the angel takes fire from the altar and puts it upon the prayers and, 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 and fills it with the fire of the altar. And it is cast upon the earth. Your prayers that went to heaven processed now in the will of God. Watch this and listen, please. Men pray. The angels process them with the incense. The prayers go into God's heart. God loves them. God breathes upon them. Now, so God takes them as his own. Now, when he begins to cast the answer down, they don't come down like your prayers have been answered. They come down as God's will is being done. Oh, my God. Say hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. So, so you watch this. The Bible says, and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar. And you remember this. It is the altar of God, the golden altar, 
the highest altar ever known and it's pure, it's gold, divinity. So divinity takes over. And when it is supposed to be released upon the earth, God's own fire. This fire is God's own presence. This is not charcoal from the earth or coal from the earth or any electricity, anything. It is God's sovereign fire, his personal presence, because the Bible says God is a consuming fire. So he receives your, your, your prayer. It's so, it's, so, it's so fragrant, it's so beautiful that he can't wait to share that beauty with you. And when it's coming down to you, he adds his own fire, his own glory, his own strength to it. And your, the, the, the answer to your prayers become fire packaged, fire protected, consumed by the glory of God. And guess how they come down? They come down as voices. They come down as thunderings. They come down as lightnings. And they come down as earthquakes. So if assuming that I ask God for a car, or let's say, as I prayed early on, and I said, Lord, Lord, give me the, the, your glory, fill all the earth as the waters cover the sea. It's my prayer. When God is answering, God does not put my name on it. He puts his own name on it. And guess what? This, this cloud, this, this glory, this, this water that covers the earth that I ask for in my natural language arrives on the earth in voice forms. Arrives on the earth with lightning, with power. As fast as lightning and thunder strikes, so quickly the prayers come down. And guess what? The revival I asked for arrived. But it didn't come as water. It came as voices, thunders, and lightnings. And when it hits the earth, earthquakes, anything that would resist it is shaken off. And it comes into the voices speaking into other people who, who are supposed to, pay, uh, to play a role in this glorious revival. And they begin to, to hear. Somebody wakes up in the morning and he has a dream. I just had a dream and the whole earth was full, full of the glory of God. Well, I prayed that prayer right now. But somebody else is seated and God is speaking to him. Arise, go on a 40 day fast, go on a three day fast. And the voice begins to speak to people to prepare them. And they have no clue that it was one prayer from Emmanuel Ziga. And a thousand people are receiving the command to put it all to, together. And God speaks to a businessman, release two million dollars for this crusade. Uh, then he gives another one. Uh, uh, he speaks to an, another pastor. Invite this man to this conference. And here the, the voices begin to give instructions upon the earth. And suddenly the voices make somebody invite this man to, to a, a mega conference. And the voices tell someone to pay for this conference. And the voices tell someone to bring this, this and that. And at that meeting, suddenly the glory hits. Pow! And people in Germany are receiving the outpouring. People in Nebraska receiving the outpouring. People on the islands on, on the sea. People are in boats. Fishermen in the Samoa Islands of the Southern Seas are receiving revivals in the ocean. And at midnight, they are fishing. But wow, glory has just hit them like lightning, like lightning. And people getting saved all over the place. One man prayed, but the results came as the voice of God. Oh, came down as thunder and lightning and earthquakes. No good thing would the Lord withhold from those who love him. I feel the glory. 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 Say hallelujah. I can hardly handle myself. I am I'm doing my best. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. And also in these same voices, people are receiving songs and melodies, which, which are part of this revival thing we are talking about. And my, suddenly somebody wakes up with a melody in the spirit, somebody else with a symphony. And by the time you are aware, there are songs which are bringing in the fulfillment of this huge gathering. Suddenly, there's a conference. And my goodness glory is the place 
It could be Bethel. It could be Hillsong. It could be Grace for All Nations conferences, Sunshine Church. It could be wherever God chooses. And guess what? Because the prayer I prayed was not my selfish prayer, but because of God's own glory, which means it is, not, it is selfless. God endorses it. And one prayer, every island is receiving a revival. So somebody will, will say, you know, we, we, this great outpouring just came upon us. We never prayed for it. Yes, you never prayed for it, but you are enjoying the prayer somebody prayed. And you know, there's this deception, therefore. The enemy tells people, you don't have to pray. You don't have to pray. Look at how big our church is going. Look at how great our, our organization is. I don't have to pray. Oh, oh, oh. Somebody prayed. You are receiving the benefits. And, and the prayer is so big, the prayer is so ubiquitous that it has, it has, it has exploded uh, multi dimensions of the purpose of God. So I prayed that, Lord, let your glory cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. It's so ubiquitous. It's so much in the heart of God. That's exactly the prayer. In, in, in Isaiah 11 verse 9. Now, it's so big that God will have to share the burden. If I say the, the burden, one prayer I prayed has many other people's blessing in it. So they begin to just receive their portion. Receive this. Because the angel took my prayer and mixed it with the purpose of God and added the incense which God desires and it came into the nostrils of God and God poured a blessing to us. God poured a blessing upon us. You remember the story when Isaac told, told Esau that, hey, go get me a venison. When I have eaten, then I will bless you. He, he, he had to give his father a venison. So he, his father's will, which he already had planned, will be released. So is prayer. Let's give God praying the way he wants it. Because he wants to bless us. He has asked us to pray because he has a blessing. Isaac asked Esau for, for a venison because he wanted to, to bless him. The reason why he wanted to release the blessing was the reason why he was hungry for the venison. Because even though the blessing was for his children, there need to be the will of his children connecting to the purpose that God had for them. The prodigal son had his money already, but his will had to be tabled before his father's hand for, the, for that which was his to be released. Ladies and gentlemen, God has tremendous blessings for us, far beyond our human comprehension. But prayer is what gives God the legal access. We are telling God, God, what you have planned, I want it. What you have planned, I want it. What you have prepared, I want it. And I want more. 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 And he loves it. And guess what? As the prayers are going, and the more I say, it's more and more and more. Guess what? The angel keeps adding the the, 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 the incense because he wants more and more and more and more and more. And guess what? He pours the glory. It, it strikes like thunder and lightning. Clap your hands. Give God some praise, please. Ah. Uh. I just, saw, I just saw a man, you are about 34 years old, and, an, 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 and another one, you are about 18 years old, and then a young man, you are about uh, uh, 25 years old, somewhere from J uh, Jamaica. I just saw you go on your knees, <laughs> because the presence of God has just come upon your life. Oh, my Lord and my God, uh, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Oh, Lord, our God, uh, how excellent is your name. <laughs> Thank you for what you have begun to do. Thank you for splitting the skies. Thank you for releasing your glory upon our lives. Thank you for the oil of favor even today. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Give you praise. So in this verse alone, we have the prayers. We have the, the incense. We have the angel. We have the presence of God. We have the fire. Then the outcome hits the earth. Cannot be stopped. By the time heaven's voices and God's thunderous and lightnings and earthquakes are released, nothing can, restore, can, can stop the prayers from, being, from coming upon the earth. That's why the enemy, because the enemy cannot stop the prayers. 
what he tries to do is to mess with your mind and to, and to, to, to bring frustrations your way so you will be dislocated from receiving the blessing. He tells you lies. He provokes you always angry and, and agitated so that you will miss the glory because the glory, the answer to the prayer is so godly that you have to, 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 to believe God and connect to his godly values to, to have it. If you are walking in disobedience and the enemy is tripping you back and forth, this is how the voices can be suspended because you are too, too confused in your mind to really see what God is, is doing. Therefore, by this prayer, by this conference, I declare your mind healed, your soul restored, your broken life healed, the sin in your life removed, be, be washed in the blood of Jesus. I declare your focus is brought back to order. I declare that everything that has gone out of alignment back into alignment. Receive the relocation of your life to be in the right position at the right time, to be in the right frequency, the right atmosphere, the right consistency in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As iron sharpens iron, so also God's will uh, will sharpen your desires and, and bring your, your soul and your spirit in, into alignment with everything God has for you. Oh, I call you blessed. I call you blessed. I call you blessed. And in conclusion, I wish I could delve more into this, but tomorrow night, don't miss it. Tomorrow morning, uh, the apostle Axel Sipak will be with us. Uh, we shall take this to the next level. But one scripture I want to end with is Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Now you can understand this principle, how our prayers hit heaven and it's mingled in the, in, with, 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 with incense in the hands of an expert angel presented to God and it's beautiful in his nostrils. Your prayers are so wonderful. He loves them. He loves them. So you know what? If just for the joy of God, enjoying the fragrance of your prayers, if that is all that he wants, you, it means you make God happy every day. Even without you receiving your answers, you are giving God a delight. He loves it. He smells good. Oh, my Lord. He just loves it. So prayer is not only because of what you can get, but also what God can get out of you. So a, a man of God, a woman of God who is a child of God, uh, one of the, the desires of your heart, in fact, the first desire of your heart is, Lord, what do you want? Tell me and I'll give it to you. Sometimes he wants you just to be in prayer. Just be in prayer. Just be in prayer. Uh, just pray in, pray in the spirit. You are making me feel good. Because that brings fellowship. That brings koinonia. That brings unity. You are walking with a friend like God. Look at what Jesus Christ said in, in Luke chapter 18 verse 1. As I, as, as I, I close my, my, my sermon. And he spake a parable unto them to this. That men ought to always pray and not to faint. Well, this is Jesus who knows the principles of how the prayers are processed. He also knows how his father loves it. So he's saying that men on this earth, if only you know how precious your prayers are, you pray without season. You just keep on praying. You ought to be praying because that's one of your jobs. The reason why you were created is to make God always full of joy. And one thing that makes that adds to the joy of God is the prayers of the saints. We are talking to our father every day. He wants to hear our voice and our prayers are connected to his will. That every father loves children who, who, who do his heart's desire. He will bless you and 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 bless you because you are connected to what pleases him. So God wants the earth to be full of his pleasure. And when he's pleased, we are pleased. We are functioning well. We are healthy. We live you longer. We are doing great things and awesome things, always full of joy and joy and joy and joy because prayer is going and going and going. And the incense is being poured and being poured and being poured. And the fire is being added, being added, being added. And, and, and lightning is coming down every day and sounds and voices and earthquake. So you see the cycle. The more we give God the prayer, the more the earth is filled every day. Something is hitting the earth every day. Hallelujah. 
I, I, I keep telling, to telling my team that, that any time we meet to pray, it's like I, 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 I always feel it. Uh, that, 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 that there's something from this altar always coming to God. And he looks forward to it. So th- there are times when I am on my knees in prayer. And, 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 and I finish praying and I, in my mind. But the Holy Spirit says, stay longer. True. Stay longer. As far as I'm concerned, I've done my due diligence. But, 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 but God has taken over. Because there comes a time when your natural energy of prayer comes to its end. And the Holy Ghost kicks in. It's now no more your energy. It is his, in his energy. And, and he just takes over and begins to just give God such a bonanza of blessings. For they that wait upon the Lord in prayer shall renew their strength. And they shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Sometimes it is running, not be weary in prayer. And, and mounting up with wings in prayer. And, and, and walking and not fainting in prayer. That's why you can start praying for one hour, two hours. And, and your, your natural strength loses power. And the Holy Ghost steps in. You don't really know. And you begin to go still 12 hours. You've just done a 12 hour uh, prayer time with the Holy Ghost taking over. You shall run and not be weary. So, the, so Jesus Christ said men always ought to pray if only you know how to get things done. It is by prayer because your dreams on this earth are big but you need more voices from heaven to help you. You need more thunder from heaven to help you. You need more lightning. Whatever those things mean, God knows. You need earthquakes earthquake to open some doors, to break some cases, to, 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 to transform atmospheres for your dream package to have no limitation. I feel so much oil. On this first day of prayer 2020, the prayer of the saints, I made this whole earth be filled with the glory of God. As I speak, may the open heavens at this place hit every city on this earth. Hit every country on this earth. Hit every street on this earth. Hit every human on this earth. Hit every church on this earth. Hit every president and leader on this earth. Hit, hit everybody who is sick on this earth. I declare open heavens, Lord. Rend down the heavens, oh God. Rend down the heavens. Let your glory hit the earth. Let your presence melt every mountain. Let the waters boil, oh God. Let your adversaries know that thou art God. For the Bible says, since the earth began, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It is recorded that the heart of man have never, never, never ever heard what the things God has prepared for them that wait upon him. Lord, prayer is when we wait upon the Lord. May he give us what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard. And these things come through the thunder and the lightning. Hallelujah. And the voices and the earthquakes which come because we we have prayed. Or because someone has prayed. You know, this sounds like like a little joke. But there are times in, 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 in our home. When there's a, there's a lightning, because Seattle, it rains a lot. There's lightning and thunder. My wife always comes to me, what did you pray? <laughs> it sounds like a joke, but you know what? You know how appropriate she is. It's a matter of God. What did you tell God today? I said, why? It's said, I hear thunder and lightning. <laughs> and and so, sometimes I think that she's joking, but sometimes she's just prophetic. Hallelujah, somebody. May the Lord give us more of such experiences on this earth. I prophesy that that during these three days of conference, God is going to begin to unveil deeper experiences of the divine in your life. And after this conference, it's even going to increase eight times more. So get ready for a renaissance. Receive. Receive. I see a man sitting down in what looks like, like a wheelchair, but it looks more like a lazy wheel, wheel, wheelchair, uh, but you are, uh, you are literally you know, paralyzed. And uh, it almost looks like um, uh, something has been eating up your muscles and your, your, your bones. It's called something dis, dis, dystrophy, uh, muscular dystrophy, something like that. Uh, and I just see you, 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 you are watching. Uh, your skin is brown, a bronze color. And you are, you are watching. I'm 
speaking to you. You can hardly talk. I have seen, I see life coming back into your muscles. I see your muscle. There's a sensation going on from your back, back side. It's coming slowly. And you are sensing it as a, as a tinkling. I see it as tinkling. But it looks like your nerves have been so dead that, that you are not sensing it now. But I see it. It's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up. Filling your system gradually, systematically. You are in for a miracle. I see you rising up with time and jumping and praising God. I see you. I see you. You speak English, but your English is broken as if uh, you, are, you are a Mexican or French national or, or you know, uh, Portuguese, a strange, a different language from English. So you have an, you have an, an, an accent. Receive. Your name has a hyphen, uh, like a de la rose or, 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 or de, de fruta, uh, something like, 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 like that. De la renta or something like that. Receive the glory of God. Receive the glory of God. Receive the glory of God. You know, when I just did this, receive the glory of God, I saw a bunch, a huge amount of money that has been released to a businessman who has been waiting and praying for a breakthrough. As I swung my hand, the, the the, the gates opened and you received this huge breakthrough for, for your in, in investment. It's around $40 million. Receive your blessings. Prayer is a master key that opens all the doors in God. I bless you with the fresh oil. Receive the anointing. Begin to pray in the spirit right now. Wherever you are, pray in the language you know. And I see 83 people being baptized with the Holy Ghost right now. You are receiving your, your, your language, your spiritual language at the first time. Right now, 83 people. I see flames of fire around your head like in the upper room. Right now, receive it, receive it, receive it. This fresh outpouring, it's like Pentecost all over again. 83 people receive, 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 receive. There's a woman, you have been ministering in healings, but something happened, it looks like you lost the grace. God has just restored your grace for, for, to walk in healings. You are, you are sensing some tinkling in your hands now. You are going to be, one more time, more than before, double more than before, you will walk in your miracles again. You will walk in your healings again. You used to evangelize. You are an evangelist. But you will, you will preach uh, for souls and do more, more miracles. And it looks like it was a miracle that attracted people to your evangelistic ministry. You are restored today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And there are other five women who have been around you. They are also re receiving the same anointing. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. Lord, we give you thanks. Thank you for healing Seattle. Thank you for restoring Seattle. Thank you, oh God, for reviving the Northwest. Thank you for restoring America. America shall shine again. We shall be one again. We shall see the goodness of God again. I prophesy that God will sound good in the ears of every American that the love of God will sound good in the ears of every American. That the peace of God will sound good in the ears of every American. That the joy of God will, will sound good in every American's ears. And unity will sound very good in the ears of every American. Father, we give you thanks that America shall become one again because your glory has descended upon the land. Thank you for healing our leaders and comforting the chief, of, the chief executive of this country. Comfort him. Heal him. Thank you for helping him. We give you thanks. Lord, there's so much more in my spirit. I feel like declaring that America come back into alignment with the will of God. Now, in Jesus' name. Nations, come back into alignment with the will of God. Now. Russia, Come into alignment with the will of God now. Uh, China.
China, Japan, Canada, hallelujah. Africa, Ghana, come back into alignment with God now. Let all the pastors and churches in Ghana come into alignment with the will of God now. So also I declare all the churches of the planet come into alignment with the will of God now. Our friends in Siberia, our friends in Sochi, come into alignment with God now. Our friends in um, in um, uh, um, uh, where 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 Esther Esther came. Armenia, Armenia, yeah, I see Armenia, I see Yerevan, our friends in Yerevan, receive alignment with the glory of God. I see an anointing hitting Armenia right now. The city of Yerevan, the churches have been praying. Somebody in Armenia has been on a Father Day fast, and today is the 31st day of the fast. The glory of God is hitting you. I see you praying, and you are, you are shaking, and I hear the Lord say that it is done, it is done, it is done. You can finish the rest of the fast just on fruits. Uh, don't, don't go dry anymore. Begin to wind up because glory has hit you. I will give you thanks as I go off this telecast oh God. I pray for salvation of many. I pray for the souls of many. I pray that many whose souls have been hardened against God will be softened towards God. God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. Jesus Christ loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. The Holy Ghost loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. The Bible is God's love book to you. Begin to devour the Bible. Begin to love it. Let it become sweet like honey in the honeycomb in your mouth. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And now shall I say, Amen. Well, I wish I could apologize for taking too much time, but you know, sometimes at the first day when the floodgates open, it's good for us to receive it. Because we are all thirsty. We are like pat lands, thirsty lands. The churches want fresh water. Let it flow, Lord. Let it flow, Lord. Let it flow, Lord. God is priming the well of your life. It's flowing again. It's flowing again. It's flowing again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I shall return. And God is good. In times like, like, like this, let's just celebrate. Uh, the goodness of God and let's just bless the Lord with all our, our giftings and our offerings this is revival in the praying season it doesn't get any better than this prayer has always been the key that has birthed revivals because they, they, they come from God's own, own glory with thunders and lightnings and voices in Jesus name I shall return in a few minutes let's give our offerings Amen. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, uh, fellow saints in the kingdom of God. <laughs> I feel the glory. Your season has come. And it's no more you pursuing God. It's now God pursuing you. And it's time because you have found favor. We have entered into a time of favor. And the glory of God is so much. God loves you. 
and he is determined to flood this earth with his love which is more powerful than weapons of war I bless you with a scripture which says that and my glory and the knowledge of my glory shall cover all the earth as the waters cover the sea I'm sorry receive the glory of God we love you Lord we love you Holy Spirit give us more give us more give us more Lord we love you Jesus we thank you Lord I hear the Lord say, my brokenness shall cover the earth. And many shall be broken in their love for me. But I can use them the way I want. Father, forgive us for being too stiff. Break us, Lord, and make us whole again. Thank you for the anointing of brokenness that has come upon earth. From the North Pole to the South Pole, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Don't let us go until you finish what you have planned for our lives. That's my prayer. And that's what I release upon your people. Don't let us go. Don't let us fall off, Lord. Don't reject us, oh God. Pursue us and bring us back home in brokenness, which is greatness and which is precious in your sight. King David says, a broken and a contrite heart you will not despise. Thank you for loving this earth and for pouring the anointing of brokenness on the saints. And all shall say, Amen. Thank you so much. Stay in prayer. I see some people who are already up 2 a.m. in other parts of the world watching 24 hours ahead watching stay in prayer you can go on on a half day fast in this consecration and consecrated time of the prayer conference the prayer of the saints till Sunday night and let's see what God will do God has released his signature on the earth and he say I will do great things in the midst of my people Amen Good night, in Jesus' name.